Hi guys, happy Monday. I hope that you're all having an amazing start to your week. Welcome back to our Q&A video. As many of you know, this is gonna be one of the last four MMQAs that I film as I am officially retiring this series. I asked you guys on my community tab as well as on Instagram for some questions. We got loads of them and I'm gonna to try to get through them as quickly as I possibly can without giving such long-winded answers as I normally do. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in, shall we? Starting with the first question. If the fashion police barged in and said, Minnie, you you have to give up five handbags right now or we're taking them all. What are the five bags you'd let go of and why? First and foremost would be the Louis Vuitton multi pochette. Uh, even though I do like to use those pieces separately, uh, I have other pieces within my collection that serve the exact same purpose, so that guy would definitely be there. Uh, next would be the Chanel chain vanity in the yellow caviar leather with the champagne gold hardware. Love, love, love the details of this vanity. Can't stand to use this as a handbag. It is not user friendly whatsoever. By far one of the worst purchases that I have ever made. Uh, next up would be the Pollen Umi. This is in the color chalk. Beautiful leather, very, very comfortable to wear on your shoulder, but it is a terrible bag to get in and out of. It is not user friendly at all either. I can't stand the zipper. It gets caught all the time and uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of usable space on the interior just because of these little pleats. The pleats go inside of the bag. Uh, I think if it didn't have the pleats, you'd have a lot more space, but still this zipper here has got has got to go. Uh, next would be the Louis Vuitton Mon Mono. I think this is now called the My Heritage Speedy in the size 30. I just don't really use it, but when push comes to shove and I want to use a monogram Speedy, I always end up going for the uh, Speedy 25 Bandolier. And last but not least, the Celine Nano Luggage Tote in the black pebbled leather. So this bag, I love it. I love the little robot face. I've used it so much over the years, but to be completely honest with you, I'm kind of over the size and I would really like to try out the micro, but it's super cute. I just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm over the size for sure. What does hubby think about your collection. All right, so before I sat down to film this video, I asked him what he thought and his words were verbatim, big, nice. <laughs> he is a man of few words, but uh, what I love and what I appreciate the most is the fact that he not only supports my love for luxury goods, but he also understands it. Even though bags are not his thing, he he is interested in them enough to give me feedback and let me know what he thinks about certain bags whenever I ask for his advice. He doesn't judge me for it by any means whatsoever. So I definitely lucked out, you know, and uh, his support his support for something that I enjoy, not just bags, just in general, things that I like. He's always like, yeah, go for it. If you like it, go for it or what have you. So um, I think uh, I think that's really nice. Next question, what are your rules when buying luxury items? How do you justify it or not get in trouble? If I don't have the money for it, I'm not gonna buy it. I don't believe in going into debt for a bag. Uh, I'm not a fan of FOMO or anything like that. If I don't have the funds for it, I won't buy it. I have an account set aside that's called Mad Money. I have never used our savings accounts to pay for any of my bags. I have never used our household accounts to pay for any of our bags. Absolutely not. If that Mad Money account is completely depleted, even if, even if it's a bag that I absolutely love and I have just a second to get, otherwise it'll be gone, if I don't have money in that account, I won't buy it. I don't care what it is. Um, I got into trouble with debt when I was way younger. I promised myself I would never ever do it again. And as I said before, I don't believe in going into debt for luxury goods. Absolutely not. All right, next question. Uh, I want to see your lipstick collection or maybe your fave one right now. <laughs> as I said, if I did a lip product or a lipstick collection video, that would be stupid long as well. My favorite ones would be the NARS. This is the Dolce Vita uh, Afterglow, Afterglow Lip Balm. It looks like it's a lot darker, uh, but it's very, very light. As it says, it's a very light lip balm, but the NARS lipsticks I think have an amazing, amazing formula. I think I've probably purchased this maybe four or five times. It's the YSL uh, 121. I don't know the name of it, but this color right here, oh, I love, love, love this color. It's a little bit lighter. It has like that brownie look to it. And the smell of these lipsticks are amazing. Next question, 
feeling like I have lost the love in bags. Any advice? I know exactly what you're talking about. And I too have felt this way to a certain extent. And in my opinion, what has worked out for me is to kind of take a step back from handbags altogether. And this might sound really weird, and I don't know if any other YouTuber feels this way, but um, there's a difference from when I used to buy bags before YouTube, before Instagram, compared to now. I love being able to share the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to bags. I, I mean, I, I think it's amazing. I like to be able to share as much information as I possibly can. At the same time, I think that that also takes away something from bags in general. I can't put my finger on it. I don't even know if it makes sense or not, but it kind of takes a little bit of the allure away from it. Maybe it's because I'm so immersed in it. I'm talking about them so much. I mean, that's all I pretty much talk about on my channel. It's not the only thing that I enjoy, uh, but it is something that I do like and it's something that I choose to spend my mad money on. You know, one of the things that I like to spend my mad money on but um, I know that when I have taken a step back altogether from buying or from looking online or anything like that, then I feel like that love kind of rekindles back and it reminds me of the good old days before social media, before it was just completely saturated in my feed and all that stuff. Again, I don't even know if that makes sense or not. And let me know if you guys feel the same way, but definitely taking a step back, maybe might end up helping to rekindle that love. I would appreciate if you can share any tips on how to list items when selling to places like Fashion File. I am always curious if payout options are correlated to the description we provide. Are there any specific words we should avoid using? This is an awesome question, and I really wish I knew the exact answer. I really wish I can give you guys, you know, better feedback. Unfortunately, I don't know. What I can tell you is what I do, and um, I always like to. I always like to start off with the condition that the bag is in or the item is in. Like I will say, excellent condition. Then what it comes with. And then after that, I will say um, it has minimal wear, it has uh, slight wear on the corners, uh, no odor, no scratches, no stains, no color transfer. That, that's pretty much what I end up using. Um, now, there have been times when I have been offered more than what I paid for my bags, and other times I have been offered peanuts for my items too, you know? So again, I don't know if this might end up helping some of you guys out when it comes to listing your items, but I always like to be very thorough. I always like to be uh, very honest in what I am selling to them, you know, I, what I'm describing. One thing I can tell you for sure that I was told by them uh, last year is that if they have a lot of that item, like if it looks exactly the same as the one that you're selling, they might end up offering you less because they have so much quantity of that item. So just keep that in mind. I'm not saying that that's always going to happen, but that's something that, uh, that they told me. Um, all right, next question. Do you think Chanel bags are still worth buying these days with their crazy, with their crazy price increases and declining quality? Do you think that their strategy to be exclusive like Hermes will backfire in the long term? You know, it seems like the harder it is to get something, the more expensive the item gets, the more people want it. I'm not saying that's for everybody. I'm not saying that's for everybody, but it seems like that because there, I mean, some of these bags have these crazy price points. So to answer your other question, do I still think it's worth buying uh, Chanel these days? I personally wouldn't spend $10,000 on a classic flap. I, I can't do it. I can't justify that. Absolutely not. I don't think any handbag is worth $10,000 in my opinion. I don't care what brand it is. However, I'm also the type of person that does think that a watch is well worth $10,000 or more. You know, so <laughs> it just depends on what it is that you like, but their their popularity seems to be going through the roof. The more increases that they have, the more it seems people want them because they are starting to get more exclusive in the sense that the price points are absolutely outrageous. So no, I don't think that it will backfire whatsoever. Um, all right, next question. What do you think of the Fendi <laughs> of the Fendi Tiffany Baguette collab? Oh my god. I was I was glued to that screen when it came to the, you know, to the to the Baguette um, fashion show. I loved every 
aspect about it. Uh, I mean, I love the fact that Tiffany and Fendi came together. Uh, the Tiffany uh, handbag, the classic Tiffany um, baguette, I'm sorry, in the Tiffany color with the silver details uh, has a crazy price point. I did think about maybe going for it. Uh, it comes in at $5,500 if I'm not mistaken. I think it's really cute, but I don't think it's a, I don't think it's, you know, it's a bag that I would end up using, especially because of the color. Uh, then they have the nano baguette and the nano baguette get is available in satin with the sterling silver or you can go for the leather Tiffany blue with the sterling sil silver as well and I had the chance to pre-order it with a uh, with a personal um, a personal shopper and uh, I believe that the nano baguette which is like this big I believe she said that the pricing was $27.50 if I'm not mistaken I was like, dude, I would have bought it if it was like maybe 1800, 2000, but 2700, almost three grand for this little ass bag. I couldn't justify it, but I love the red sequins. The red sequins is amazing. My favorite one out of the entire show is the, crystal, the silver crystal one. Oh my God, that bag is amazing. And when I was talking to her, she said uh, to the personal stylist or the personal shopper, she said that, the le if the leather Tiffany one is fifty five hundred, she thinks that the crystal one is going to be like seven eight thousand. That <laughs> that's like that's out of my price range. I mean, let's be honest, it's out of my price range. It's it's way too rich for my blood, and uh, it might be a bag that I will appreciate from afar. But if it's like five six and that's ugh, that's nauseating to think of the price point for a crystal bag. I might do it, but <laughs> I don't know, all right? But if it's like seven grand, hell no. But uh, huge, huge fan of the collab. I think it's I think it's amazing. Next question, thoughts on the Crescent bag trend, specifically the Givenchy moon cutout and small slash mini. So when it comes to Crescent bags, uh, not just the Givenchy, I, I, I think they're very cute. I think that they're very pretty when I see them out and about they are one of the worst styles when it comes to bags. Why? Because of the shape that it has. The, I mean, you have unusable space on the corners here and everything just kind of gravitates towards the middle. I can't stand them. Functional for me, user-friendly, absolutely not. Gorgeous, 100%. 100%. Next question, would you ever consider getting the YSL Nikki medium bag? Um, no, that is definitely one Saint Laurent bag that I can absolutely without a doubt say I do not like. I don't like the leather. Um, I know it's supposed to have that vintage feel to it, very casual. I don't like the leather. I don't like the, the structure that it has. I don't like the chain that it has. Uh, I don't find it appealing whatsoever. So I am definitely not a fan. However, I have heard that it is insanely, insanely comfortable. So that I can, uh, I can definitely appreciate. Um, all right, next question. I'm a lip, I'm a lip product addict too. Uh, LOL. Please show how much the YSL Lolita cosmetic pouch can hold. I'm drooling over this pouch and the smaller size. Okay, so the Lolita pouch, this guy right here, this is the larger size because they do have a smaller one that's about this right here. So I filled it up for this video. In here, I have two of the Chanel Beauty Eggs. I also have a Chanel Lip Pot and 25 lipsticks. I think they're all gonna fly out. 25 lipsticks. You know what, let me take these little eggs out. Just to give you an idea, this thing is insane. So here are all the lipsticks. So if I took out those three items, the, the lotion and the other lip pot, you still have enough space for maybe 10 more lipsticks, easy. This thing is amazing. Not that I would carry 25 lipsticks around because I, don't, I wouldn't know what to do. Plus this, this thing can get pretty heavy with that many lip products. But minimum, I shouldn't say minimum, but <laughs> 25 lipsticks at least, and then some. Highly, highly recommend it in this leather. It is just delicious, delicious leather. That's the way that I can describe it. Delicious lambskin leather, fantastic. And it doesn't seem like it's delicate, like you're gonna scratch it either. So I love that. Um, all right, next question. Do you, have any, do you have any opinion on luxury pet products such as Louis Vuitton pet collars? 
I think that they're really cute. Uh, I think that some brands do it better than others. Uh, I know that Gucci just launched an entire pet line and some of them are, are like stupid expensive. And I really think that they play on the heartstrings of pet, uh, you know, pet parents uh, because they're adorable, but I mean, really like five grand for a pet bed, that's insane. No, no. Plus all of my boys have been pretty large. So I haven't been able to get them a Louis Vuitton collar or anything like that. Next question, are you ever going to get the Fendi Peekaboo? Definitely not. I have made my peace with that. The Fendi Peekaboo to me is a bag that I love the idea of more than I actually, than I actually see myself using the bag. I don't know. I like it from afar. I love it when people, you know, when I see it out and about, but, um, yeah, it doesn't do anything for me anymore. I'm like, eh, it's cute, but not for me. Um, all right, next question. So I was wondering, do you think that you will ever end buying luxury handbags? I say this because the prices are just outrageous in store and pre-loved. I couldn't believe that the bum bag is now 5K. Glad I got mine when I did. I may have one more bag in me and then maybe I think I'm done. You know, as I said before, I think that handbags are always going to be a thing that I love. As long as it continues to bring me joy, I will continue buying them. If that joy should ever fizzle out, I, I wouldn't think twice about selling everything and then just moving on to other things, you know, but I've always loved handbags since I was a little kid. I've always loved bags. I think that they're amazing and I'm not a handbag snob either. It doesn't have to be expensive for it to be an amazing bag. I love contemporary brands. I love vintage bags. I love the cheapy bags too, just bags in general. I am 100% a bona fide handbag addict for sure. Next question, can you please share your favorite fragrances? Absolutely. So when it comes to fragrances in general, I'm not the type of person that has fragrances only for summer, only for winter or stuff like that. No, when I like something, I will use it year round and I will use it to death. And these three um, are definitely some of my top three at the moment. First up is the Bond Number no. 9 Scent of Peace. I love Bond Number no. 9 scents in general. I think that they are amazing fragrances. They're a little bit more expensive but in my opinion, well worth it. And uh, the scent of peace has light florals, some citrus, as well as some woodsy elements to it. But uh, it has awesome, awesome lasting power. If I put it on at five o'clock in the morning, I still have it on at five o'clock in the evening. Uh, it's not too heavy. It doesn't give me a headache or anything like that. And I get tons of compliments on this fragrance, but I, I, think, it's, I think it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I've had maybe six or seven of their fragrances over the years, and uh, it's, it's a brand that I always end up going back to. Uh, another one is Tom Ford's Rose Prick. I am obsessed with this fragrance. This is newer to my fragrance collection, but it is absolutely amazing. Now, I normally don't go for rose scented perfumes just because I think that a lot of people miss the mark. Sometimes it smells, it just doesn't smell anything like a rose. It just, it, it ends up smelling a little bit more synthetic than I would like. Many rose scents out there give me headaches. Um, I got a lot of questions on, um, on Instagram when I was talking about this and some people had suggested the uh, the Louis Vuitton rose scent and uh, I actually have a small sample of the Louis Vuitton I think it's rose devant uh, and it smells like garbage on me <laughs> it smells terrible I put it on and I'm like oh no it does not work with my body chemistry this guy however works fabulously. And I think I read on, uh, on an article that Rose Prake, um, was made, was created for people that don't like rose scents and it absolutely works. It doesn't smell synthetic. It smells amazing. I get a crazy amount of compliments whenever I use this fragrance and a little bit, just a little bit goes a long, long way. I mean, Another, this is another one of those things that if I put it on at five o'clock in the morning, I still have it on at nine o'clock at night and it still smells on my clothing, you know? So I, I like that, you know, again, it's not too strong. It's not, it doesn't give me a headache as most other, um, rose fragrances give me like that nasty headache that makes me want to throw up. This does not. So huge, huge fan. And last but not least, you guys hear Theo? <laughs> 
uh, is the Dolce & Gabbana number no. three La Imperatrice. This is my end-all be-all fragrance. It has uh, those light florals, very, very light florals. It definitely leans more towards the citrus, a little bit more towards the grapefruit. I, this, I think that this is my signature scent. You know, and it's not crazy expensive either. I think they're like 82 bucks or something, but love it. Absolutely love it. So those are definitely my top three at the moment, but L'Imperatrice is um, is always in the mix <laughs> for sure. Uh, all right, next question. Can you tell us something about the bag you posted, Aspinall of London? So the other day on Instagram, um, I like to do like the handbag of the day and I'll share the bag that I'm using obviously that day. And it was this beauty right here. I've also gotten a lot of questions on this bag because it's been on my background, um, in this background as well as my other background. But this is the Aspinall of London Midi Mayfair. I believe it's in the color cloud with the champagne gold hardware. This is a fantastic, fantastic bag. I have become mesmerized when it comes to Aspinall of London. Their attention to detail and the quality of their bags is out of this world. Now the price point for these bags would put them more in the contemporary or higher end bags uh, than luxury, but with the details that they have and the leather that they have and the quality that they have, for me, it would rival many luxury brands. It is absolutely amazing. There is not a stitch, not a stitch out of place. It smells amazing. I love the structure. Uh, they do have a few different types of the, the faux croc embossed. Um, they have some that have like the smaller pebbles, kind of like the one that I have on my Nano Mayfair. This one has more of the square detailing and I really like this a lot more, but it's a fantastic bag. They have four different sizes. They have the regular size, which is just the Mayfair, the Midi, the Mini, and then the Nano. And I, I love this one. It comes with a removable chain strap and then you could just use it as a little top handle. The structure is amazing. It has a back pocket. And when you open it up, I still think I have my stuff in here. I do. I have my wallet in there. I have a couple of SLGs. It's not, a, it's not an enormous bag, but it fits everything that I need for the day and it's perfect. Um, I just, I think it's an amazing, amazing bag. And I know that in the past I've said that there are many contemporary brands out there that have amazing quality for the price point that you're paying. In my opinion, I would have to say that the Aspinall of London uh, knocks all of those out of the water and would have to be one of the higher, one of the higher, the higher up, if you will, um, contemporary brands out there for the price point and the quality that you're getting. It's just, it's amazing. So I am just, <laughs> I am in awe when it comes to Aspinall of London. Um, and speaking of which, uh, do you think that you will end up buying another Aspinall of London? I will, and actually I did. <laughs> I did. I bought another Midi Mayfair. Uh, it should be here. I believe it said the 12th of October. Uh, so hopefully I get it sooner. But if not, then um, I'll have to do like a, a reveal or a review or something on it. But I, I'm obsessed, obsessed with those uh, with those bags and with that brand. Another question, what will replace the Q&A videos? I'm really thinking about uh, doing more of the Love It or Leave It uh, series because I know that I started that in 2019 or 2020, early 2020. And because there are so many different collections that drop throughout the year and we always want you know more eye candy, that's definitely something that I've been thinking about replacing MMQA altogether. Plus, I can do more of those videos than I have been doing uh, MMQAs for sure. So that's, um, that's what I want to focus on. So hopefully that ends up working out. I know that I wanted to do Fendi's um, recent uh, fall winter 2022 collection for the, the next video. So I'll love it or leave it on that. Next question, what's your opinion on the YSL college bag? I got this question quite a bit during my St. Laurent collection video. Now, funny enough, this is a bag that doesn't really speak to me, which makes zero sense considering that it looks so similar or has similar features to the Lulu. And in some cases it has other details that I think are better than the Lulu, right? So, I mean, I appreciate the fact that it has a lot more versatility. The fact that it has a top handle and it also comes with a 
removable chain strap that you can use crossbody or longer, you know, as a longer shoulder bag, I think is wonderful. So the versatility is fabulous. Uh, I've heard a lot of people rave about the leather, uh, the fact that it is very comfortable. I like the fact that it has compartments, not to mention the price point for an all leather bag and the quality that you're getting. So all of that I love, but the thing that really doesn't appeal to me is the type of leather that they used for this bag, which again, I know a lot of people rave about, a lot of people like, but for me personally, when it comes to that chevron uh, quilting, I wanted it to be in the pebbled leather. I like it better in the pebbled leather. It gives it a little bit more structure. I imagine it would make the bag a lot heavier, but I think that it would age a little bit better than the skinny chevron details uh, that it has on the quilts. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just crazy. But um, I mean, like I said before, I can appreciate so many aspects about the bag. I just don't like the leather that they used for it because um i don't know it gives it that relaxed look obviously it's very casual but if it had the pebbled detailing i think it would just completely elevate the bag i don't know <laughs> i don't know again it would make it super super heavy but um yeah i don't know maybe if they came out with a different leather I'd be more inclined to go for it. But as of right now, I can appreciate it from afar because of what it brings to the table. Absolutely. So no, the college bag is a no-go for me. Next question, Gucci Affidia Tote or the Neverfull MM? Is the Neverfull still worth it at the current price? Ooh, all right, so I did bring them out so we have more eye candy. This is the Gucci Denim Affidia. And here I brought the Neverfull MM and the monogram canvas. I absolutely love them both. I use this Denim Affidia all the time. It's honestly one of the best purchases that I've made. I think it's fantastic. Having said that, the Neverfull still takes the cake. For me, this is one of the best handbags on the planet. I don't care, as I've said before, if I'm the last person that loves this bag, that uses this bag, this will be with me until the better end. So for me, I personally think that it's still worth it at its current price point, and I love it so much, and I use it so much that even if it was well past its current price point. We're talking if this bag was like $3,000, $4,000, being canvas, I would break my own Louis Vuitton canvas rule. My rule is <laughs> that I don't purchase any canvas pieces over two grand because, I mean, it's, it's mostly canvas and some leather trimmings. But for this one, I would break my rule. Absolutely. That's how much I love it. That's how much I use this bag. So, I mean, the Gucci Ophidia is amazing. Uh, the denim turns into that beautiful mess. Uh, you guys know I have an organizer in here. Uh, the canvas, they have different canvas uh, prints. And um, a lot of people have said that the canvas wears really, really well. But for me personally, this guy, still. I have yet to find a tote that knocks that bag out of the water, but that's just me. <laughs> uh, all right, next question. What do you think about buying Lady Dior pre-loved? I see many large ones for under 2000. So the Lady Dior is one that I have had on my wish list many of time for years. I have put it on the wish list. I've taken it off. I go back and forth. I definitely have a love hate relationship. And for the longest time I wanted the small, uh, I definitely don't want the small anymore. And then I thought about the medium. The medium's cute, but in all honesty, I have definitely been thinking about the large ones. I like the large one. It's it's boxy and it doesn't have this tiny little zipper either. Uh, I love the way that it looks. Uh, so I might end up going for a larger Lady Dior pre-loved, absolutely. Pre-loved is the way to go for me when it comes to the Lady Dior. Um, their current retail prices are just insane, considering that they really don't end up holding their resale value as well as others. But um, yeah, the large Lady Dior, I think there are some fabulous ones. Like you said, well under 2,000. I've seen some for like 1,200, 1,100, and they're in like immaculate condition as well. So next question, may we please see your jewelry? All right, so as far as doing a full-blown jewelry collection video, to be completely honest with you, it makes me uncomfortable. Just thinking about it gives me anxiety. I don't know why. Uh, so that's definitely not something that I would end up doing. Plus, it would be stupid long and nobody wants that, trust, <laughs> trust me. Uh, because I do have a mix of fine jewelry, costume jewelry, and vintage jewelry, which is usually what I end up wearing on the daily anyways. But as far as what I'm wearing currently, because I do get a lot of questions on the jewelry pieces that I'm wearing in my videos, uh, because some of them do stay the same, I thought I would run through those 
as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, all right, so as far as my hands, I have my wedding ring. Then I also have a signet ring with an E in cursive there. Uh, I have my love ring, my Justin Clou ring. Uh, I don't think I've shared this one with you guys. The hubs gifted it to me, I wanna say probably about a month ago month and a half ago and this is uh, a family ring it's been in our family for generations it's a, a gold ring I absolutely love it I use it all the time as far as my wrists go uh, I have my sterling silver return to Tiffany tag bracelet I've had this bracelet for I want to say it's probably been like 20 or 21 years I love it. It's one of my prized possessions. My mom gave it to me and I, I mean, it's amazing. These two bracelets are cost, not costume, they are vintage, well, they're costume, but they are vintage bracelets from the 40s. This is a gold rope chain bracelet that I got for Christmas, I wanna say two or three years ago. On this wrist, I have a, uh, hang on, <laughs> I have a tennis, a diamond tennis bracelet. Uh, this bracelet here, I never take it off. Uh, these little beads are supposed to be uh, Morse code and it's supposed to stand for until we meet again. I got that for Christmas. Absolutely love it. As far as my watch, this is the Michelle CRX 36 two-tone watch uh, that I got uh, about a month ago. Love it. And oh, my my ears, my ears. Uh, so I have two I have two piercings on one side, three on the other. I have diamond hoop earrings that I got for my birthday last year. I have a diamond stud on this side, and then these two at the very top. Uh, it's a heart, a gold heart, and a gold e. It was a pair, and these two. I, I take them off to clean them, but other than that, they are always in my ear. Regardless of any other types of earrings that I'm wearing, these two will forever stay on my ears. I'm sure you guys know why. And, oh, my necklace. Uh, this necklace is from a company called Second Life Jewels. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I've talked about them many, many of times. I love them. They are based out of Canada, uh, but they do ship worldwide. And what I love about them is that they repurpose luxury goods. They take the hardware from authentic luxury go goods and they turn it into jewelry, like necklaces, bracelets, earrings, you name it. I think that they are absolutely fabulous. They use uh, gold-plated sterling silver chains. And I love this chunky one. It has a CC medallion on it, but I probably have about maybe 20 or 25 pieces from, <laughs> from this brand. I'm obsessed, I think that they're amazing. And I will put all of their information on the description box below if you guys wanna check them out. Next question, which Michelle watch do you like best? Uh, okay, so I just have the two, the CRX36 that I talked about, or that I bought about a month ago or a couple of weeks ago. And then I have the Diamond Deco between the two this guy right here. This is the Diamond Deco Extra Large Michelle watch. They no longer make this size. They have, the, the one that they currently have is a little bit smaller than this one. But this is like, this is my jam. Like the bigger watches, I just, I love. I mean, so much so that when the time comes, when the time comes, I will be buying a Rolex Datejust 41 uh, because I think that just the bigger watches <laughs> definitely speak to me. You know, not saying that I don't like the smaller ones, but just the, I don't know, they're massive, they're they're gaudy, I don't know. <laughs> but that, that's definitely my style for sure. Um, all right, next question. Will you consider buying a Picatin 18 from Hermes? Um, you know, I think, I think they're, they're kind of cute. It reminds me of a dressier Balenciaga extra, extra small everyday tote, the one that I have in the color mink. Uh, it reminds me of that. Um, it doesn't have a crazy price point either. I think they're, I mean, it's kind of cute. It's a, it's a little simple. It's definitely a bag that I can see myself getting, but it's, it's not like on a wish list or anything like that. But if someone gifted it to me, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit there and say, no, take it back. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't sit there and say, take it back. Absolutely not. Uh, I do think it's cute, but it's not, it, I don't know. It's, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. It's, um, it looks like it's really comfortable. And uh, I've heard a lot of people say that they are small, but very, very, very mighty. So I do appreciate that. Next question. What do you think about the, Val the Valentino Loco bag? Are Valentino bags worth it? All right, so the Valentino Loco bag, this guy right here, it's available in a variety of different colors. I think it's available in a few different sizes as well. Um, I'm not too crazy about it. Um, 
which is kind of which is kind of nuts because it has the beads on there and some of them also have the rhinestones uh, so you guys know how I feel about those things but this one I don't know and to be completely honest with you when it comes to Valentino bags for myself for me I feel like they seem like they look like and the quality of their leather reminds me of contemporary but they have a luxury price point. I don't think that the price point for the quality that they are match up by any means whatsoever. Those are just my two cents. I'm not trying to sit here and totally bash them, but I don't know. I, I really have a, I guess a love-hate relationship with that one as well, because it doesn't, I don't know. I, sometimes I feel they're just kind of, meh, they're all right, but I don't think they're worth the price point, no. Absolutely not. Even if they're full of crystals and stuff like that, I don't, I'm not crazy about their leather. So, um, I don't think they're worth it. Not for me anyways. <laughs> all right. Next question. Which bag do you currently have your eye on? Uh, all right. So I do have a couple. You guys heard me talk about the Lady Dior, the large Lady Dior. Although I haven't fully decided if that's one that I'm going to pursue because I do go back and forth with, with it quite a bit. Uh, but that one is semi on my radar. Another bag is the Fendi Baguette uh, because I did end up getting rid of my Mama Baguette uh, about a year ago. And uh, I don't have any Fendi in my collection right now. I just just don't know if I want to go for the canvas version with the classic logo mania or if I want to go for it in leather and the leather I'm thinking about it I'm thinking about it in either white black or red I have a feeling I might end up going more towards the black than anything else but it's between those two uh, but I would really like to add a um, a Fendi baguette to uh, to my shelf. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. Next question. Anything else you collect besides bags? Yes. <laughs> uh, I collect two other things that are, are I'm pretty diehard about. First and foremost would be lipsticks. Um, I am like a moth to a flame when it comes to lipsticks, lip products. You guys know this. I always call myself a lick, uh, a lick, a lip junkie. I have well over 250 lipsticks um, and the craziest thing of all is that they're all pretty similar when it comes to the shade i can i I'm, I'm sure i have dupes for dupes in my you know my lipstick collection and i always end up going for the same type of shades either nudes or light browns and then i also have reds other than that that, that, that's it. <laughs> that's all I have, you know, besides, of course, lip glosses and lip balms. But lipsticks uh, are is a thing that I also collect and uh, vintage jewelry. And you guys know this. I've talked about it many of times on my on my channel. Vintage jewelry I am obsessed with. Anything from the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, costume or fine. I have uh, brooches, necklaces. I have handbags, bracelets. I mean especially the ones that are full of rhinestones. Like I have a bib from the, from the 30s. It's in like pristine condition and it's full, full of rhinestones. <clears throat> Excuse me, full of rhinestones. And I, I love that stuff, especially when we go antiquing. Oh, I live for antiquing and thrifting and going to flea markets. You are more likely to find me at a flea market or at an antique store than you are to find me at the mall. For, for sure. So <laughs> that's a little, that's a little tidbit. All right. Next question. Just wanting your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton Cousin. So the Cousin, in my opinion, I think it looks like fast fashion with a ridiculous price point. Um, the thing that I love about it the most is the chain that a lot of people end up using as a as a necklace. Uh, there are multiple sizes that you can go for. There are there's a variety of color which I definitely appreciate. But to me, it just screams fast fashion at a ridiculous price point. So I am not a fan by any means whatsoever. But I do love the colors that it's available in and the leather that they use for it, even though I'm not a fan, I think that the leather that they use and the colors that they have, they make the colors look so incredibly vibrant and uh, it's very, very soft, but I'm just personally not a fan whatsoever. Um, all right, next question. What do you think about the Dior Caro bag? So the Caro line, um, I, I do like it. I do think that it's beautiful. I like the medium uh, classic Caro bag and 
Yeah, I mean, to me, it reminds me of the boy bag. I'm a fan. It's all leather. It has, you know, it has a higher price point, but it reminds me of Chanel prices before all the crazy increases. So I think that for the quality of leather, I think uh, I think it's amazing. Unfortunately, they also don't end up holding their resale value as well. And that just seems to be Dior in general. Unless you go for like the smaller cutesy bags, it seems like all the other bags they have, I mean, you can find them on the pre-love market for way, way less than retail and still in amazing condition. Next question, what's your favorite vacation that you've ever taken? Definitely when the hub surprised me to go to Paris for the first time for my birthday. Uh, we've been a few times, but that one definitely takes the cake. If you could go shopping in one city in the world, where would it be? Paris, because they have they have everything. Uh, what do you think of Tory Burch bags for someone who can't afford a ton of luxury bags? Bags. I think that Tory Burch has uh, has really great quality, uh, especially for the price point. Um, there are some that I think are a little bit overpriced, especially when you go into the boutique. Um, but I, from what I've heard, a lot of people rave about uh, Tory Burch bags, especially their leather that they're very, they're you know, they're very hard wearing. They're workhorses, so I think that's great. I do have one Tory Burch bag, which is that ginormous straw bag. Uh, so I can't really, you know, I can't really say too much as far as the leather goes when it comes to a full leather handbag. But I've heard great things about them. Uh, do you work out? If so, what's your favorite workout? I do. I, uh, I go running, I go jogging, uh, walking, and I also do high intensity cardio. Uh, out of all of them, I would have to say that the high intensity cardio is definitely my favorite because I burn the most calories in a shorter amount of time. <laughs> I'm not really like, uh, I, I don't go to the gym. I can't stand the gym. I work out uh, at home, but um, yeah, definitely the high intensity workout. Uh, okay, next question, your fave fall drinks. This might surprise some of you guys, uh, but I am a black coffee, two sugars and cream type of chick. I don't like flavored coffees. I can't stand Starbucks. I think that their coffee tastes like garbage um, or that goes for coffee, tea and bean, whatever they are. Or I just, I'm not a big fan of coffee. Like I don't go out of my way to go buy coffee. I like the coffee that I make at home. Um, it's just, it's definitely my thing. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, um, yeah, so like when people post like their coffee drinks and they have this shot and this macchiato and this, I, I, I'm completely lost in that world because um, it's, it's definitely not my thing for sure. Uh, and the last question, would you ever consider a meetup in Orange County or San Diego? Just a fun shopping trip with friends. I would. I totally would, but I don't think anybody would come. So <laughs> I've never been like, I know I thought about it in the past, but I've never really been too inclined to put it together. Cause I always wonder, I'm like, what if no one shows up, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I think it would be fun. Uh, definitely fun to do that for sure. All right, you guys, so that does it for our MMQA. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope I was able to answer your questions. I know that it's a little bit longer than, uh, than I hope for. I have a feeling anyways, but I wanted to get as many questions as possible since this is one of the last MMQAs. But I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.